Ecosystems. Looking at the living and non-living things interacting with each other in a given area. You can see from our little diagram that there are various parts of an ecosystem. They can also range in size from a puddle to an entire biome that spans a continent. So let's get started. So when we look at ecosystems, we're looking at two big ideas. The first, organisms are interdependent with one another and with their environment. Think food webs. And two, matter and energy flow through an ecosystem. Matter being all the stuff of the universe, physical and otherwise, and energy primarily from the sun. How does it go from the energy sun make its way through to the end of the food chain? When we look at the monarch butterfly and its relationship to the milkweed, the milkweed gets its food from its energy from the sun to produce its own food, which in turn it produces nectar, which is a food to attract the butterfly to pollinate its flowers so that it can reproduce seeds. Of course, the monarch benefits as well. So I like to break words apart to help us understand them better. Eco is a prefix as defined as the environment, habitat, or surroundings. An example you've probably heard of is eco-friendly or ecology, things having to do with the environment. The other part, of course, is system. And systems are a group of intersecting or interdependent parts forming a complex whole. An example of that is the blood transportation system in our bodies, where it takes a number of parts, everything from capillaries and blood vessels to arteries and veins, heart and lungs, to transport blood cells throughout the body, oxygenating and nourishing our muscles and brain. Together, looking at an ecosystem, we look at both non-living and living parts, and together they make an entire system that works together in a given ecosystem. To better understand an ecosystem, sometimes you must look at the trophic levels. Trophic levels are different levels of the food web or food chain. You're starting with, at the base, the producers, the primary consumers, the, and on up the chain. And of course, there's one element that's not been added to this that we've already looked at, and that is the decomposers, which include not only the fungus, but other detritivores, such as worms, mealybugs, flies. So let's take a closer look at a gem of an ecosystem that focuses on Yellowstone National Park. It's the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem. This here is a picture of a hot springs in the park itself. Uh, Yellowstone was created as a national park in 1872 based on the extraordinary beauty and uniqueness found there and nowhere else on Earth. Formed actually by a caldera, which is a giant volcano exploding millions of years ago, and opening up an area much closer to the mantle of the earth. But if you look at this graphic here, there is much more that encompasses Greater Yellowstone than just the National Park shown in gold. The species and fauna and habitats that were found within the park extended well beyond the borders of the National Park itself, which is 2.2 million acres to an area encompassing three states covering 28 million acres. Much different, but very important to the understanding and survival of many of the species that encompass those found in the National Park. There's some words you'll want to become familiar with, and some of those are shown here, a definition of ecosystem terms. The first being niche, a role of species or population plays in an ecosystem. 
I've set aside a YouTube video on that. If you'd like to watch that, you're welcome to. It's very short. Population, a group of organisms that are the same species living in the same area. Sample, of course, is our Cajau and Bermuda, species living in, in or making use of the island of Bermuda. And finally, meander. You'll hear this in the video, a series of curves in the course of a river caused by the eroding of stream or river banks. And this uh, graphic here will show you how that works. A meandering river is usually a very slow moving river across a relatively flat landscape. It erodes the banks and widens and narrows 